Namaste, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to Namaste Today in the Zodiac Weather. My name is Christopher Wateki. I am the Sensei to Serious Joy, here to help you stand in your heart and walk in the light. Broadcasting live in five dimensions in the beautiful Temple of Gaia. It is Tuesday, November 24, 2014, and today I'm happy to say that Natural Born Step 3 rules the day. Natural born to Sagittarius, that is. And happy birthday to all the Step 3 Sagittarius out there. You are Grandmaster Sagittarius if you are a Step 3 Sagittarius. But be sure to check your chart and see what degree your sun was at. It must be at 3. Remember, the Earth wobbles, and so sometimes Step 3 is on this date, sometimes Step 3 is tomorrow, sometimes Step 3 is yesterday, as far as you know, calendar dates are concerned. But 3 is a magic number. It is the Grandmaster number of philosophy, religion, uh, belief structure, basically where consciousness comes together. Or it's also the ruler of the collective consciousness, how all consciousness comes together. In today's Sensei Sunrise, I'm going to give you a little bit of the architecture of incarnation and how belief structure comes together. And in today's Gong, we're going to talk about how to manage belief structure and how to open up today. But before we do, let's first tame our brain, shall we, with the phrase of the day. I hereby honor and believe whatever my heart tells me. Now, I'll explain why this is a little bit later, but let's just say it, say it loud, say it proud today. I hereby honor and believe whatever my heart tells me. So if my heart tells me, I'm going to just surrender and believe because heart is source and source is creation. So if your heart is creating it, you better believe it because you're creating it right? <laughs> the serious step of the day is step three. This is, as you know, I believe where spirituality and human consciousness gets interesting. The moon is still in Capricorn, and so we are letting go of control issues, attachments to the past, attachments to emotionally doing things a certain way, and I'll talk about it today in the planet soup, but the moon is heading for Mars today, so as the day moves on, we get a bit more aggressive. Now, tonight's sky, there might be a bit of an aggressive uh, breakdown around 7 p.m. Eastern. That is, of course, at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and I forgot that yesterday. I actually predicted it, but I did the math wrong. So I was like full of like, what is going on? And just what's the energy? And I was like, oh, it's the breakdown I predicted. <laughs> so take a look at it. It's kind of interesting how the universe will kind of pull the rug out from under us. Now, looking at the ruling chakras. First starter, step three, is I believe, which rules the third eye. The third eye. Isn't that funny? Two eyes and then make a third on top, right? This is us light casting or projecting forward. So Sagittarius is how we basically draw the future based on our beliefs. Okay, so we are drawing the future right now. In fact, things might be very heady right now. The moon is in Capricorn, so it is also focused on the back of the third eye. So you might be literally having congestion if you're having trouble with your belief structure right now. Usually in the early chapter, we have congestion and silly body issues that simply reflect, of course, the spiritual issues we're dealing with. And then I'm going to talk about this also. Saturn is at step 26, which is a grandmaster degree for Saturn, adds to 8. And that is in Scorpio. And that means that we are uh, having to hold grandmaster boundaries, which means throat chakra issues. And remember, when it comes to the throat chakra, the boundary is actually in the back of the throat. So uh, Scorpio is always protecting our back. But there's a lot of Saturn energy on the planet, which I'll talk about today in Planet Soup. Recognize your throat chakra is off the hook. Now let's look at Planet Soup. What does God have cooking up there in the stars? Well, Sun is at 3 degrees Sagittarius. We're in Chapter 1 of Sun and Sagittarius. And so today I imagine the truth will come out. Now it's no accident that the Craig Ferguson trial happened yesterday in Step 2 when we were emotional. Now in Step 3, what will we do? We'll learn about it. We'll think about it. We'll decide, hmm, do I agree with all this going on? But the real planetary party really deals right here with this. Today, Mercury dead conjuncts Saturn. That means today you will have your mind made up 
about where an emotional boundary will lie and where it needs to stay and that's the way it's going to be because you said so and so it is so thoughts are made up and again maybe the craig ferguson trial is your extraneous excuse to make up your mind about something but it, re it represents a lot. It represents where we are and where we've come. And I'm not just talking about Craig Ferguson. I'm talking about Mercury conjunct uh, Saturn. We have, uh, in the last 30 years, since Saturn was in uh, Scorpio the last time, had to emotionally grow up or not. And now, with Saturn conjuncting, it is time to unite your mind and your decisions into one simple philosophy. Then flipping over the lightning boulder into Sagittarius, we have the Sun at Step 3, the Grand Master Step 3, and today Venus at 11. So what that means is Venus is our giving and receiving. You may be exploring in Step 3. Your consciousness and heart is going out there to look and explore and whatever, but your giving and receiving is as it relates to integrity, step 11. So it's an interesting day indeed. We're wrapping up and standing on the emotional foundation of Saturn and Scorpio. We're standing on that with our mind and is the foundation of that emotion and feeling a certain way that allows us to go up, explore, and heal in Sagittarius. Now Mars himself is at step 23 Capricorn and like I said, the moon in Capricorn is heading for Mars and we'll hit Mars tonight. Step 23 comes down to a five. So that means that we are moving ahead to change our thoughts, step five, about control, Capricorn. And control is a hot issue right now going on in the background. This is why it's super important to I'll accept and receive. Let it go and let it flow. Both Neptune and Chiron are operating at step four, or the quantum four. So, and they're both, um, uh, and they're both actively healing us. But with all this energy to move forward into a new philosophy, and all this energy to change the way we control things in Capricorn, this spiritual miracle uh, little point is extremely important. We need to be very self-forgiving, very okay. So even myself, still frustrated with certain things going on with technology because now that I upgraded my computer, all the other software doesn't compute. So it's like, Rah! so it doesn't stop really, you know, but I want to say that it's extremely important, says Neptune and, and Chiron, that to be, it's okay, it's okay. You really just have to keep skipping. We have a long way to go. And then finally, Uranus, this is uh, another interesting point. Uranus is at step 12. What is step 12? A three which means that we are changing our overall philosophy about who we are, Uranus and Aries. And it's retrograde, so we're actually releasing old ego, old anger, and we'll continue to release as long as Uranus is retrograde in Aries, continuing to release old ego. So what does that bring us to for today's Sensei Sunrise? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Oh, software, the bane of my existence. <sighs> Actually, software is the poetry of the modern age, I do believe. But the person who wrote this program was no poet. All right, so looking at today's Sensei Sunrise, step three rules the day. And I want to talk about the architecture of incarnation as it relates to step three. Now, remember yesterday, this may look like the same slide, but it's not. Remember, we talked about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in my opinion, are step zero, step one, and step two. Basically, I protect is the Father holding space. I love is uh, the Son, where we create manifestation, and I feel is us feeling that reality, which is the ghostly part. But I want to point out that this dimension of three is basically the dimension of the third dimension. Everything in the third dimension is based in three states of awareness, working in uh, simultaneous harmony or not, disharmony. So another way of looking at Father, Son, the Holy Ghost is mind, body, and spirit. The mind is where the Father thinks of manifesting. The body is where it actually manifests. And the spirit is the spirit of feeling alive, the Holy Ghost. Or you could call it live, love, be. <gasps> That's right. I'm a clever boy. But there's a lot of everything in threes. And here's why. This is why I want to show you the threes. It's because of the uh, the architecture of sacred geometry. Now, I don't know if you know sacred geometry, but it talks about how basic sacred geometry is the study of sacred angles in physical reality. But those angles also exist in human consciousness. Okay, So you can see here how I believe works. And look, see, it's a pyramid. At the bottom is I protect. So the eye protection is the father, the foundation, 
uh, the father, the foundation. So we have this foundation and we feel a certain way about things and we love something else. And when we feel and love and protect something, we believe. So believe, to be able to believe, you must, to truly believe, you must incorporate step zero, step one, and step two, which is what the 11 steps of serious choice say. In fact, every step is an incremental step. You can't do step one if you haven't, you, you can do a step without doing another step. That's why people screw up all the time. But uh, you can't manifest really good things. And as far as believing is concerned, to believe in something with your whole heart, it has to be protected, you have to feel it, and you have to love it. Now, I think it's the I protect that people screw up on all the time. People don't protect their beliefs, or they do. I mean, I think ISIS and all this over-the-top religious stuff that we see in the world is people overly protecting their beliefs or going to extreme measures. So we know that belief is sacred to us, and we know that people hurt us for our belief, but do we know that we need to consciously lay down a protection of our belief before we build true belief? And did you know that when you believe something, you must love it and you must feel it? All right. Now this is where we have conflicts of inner belief structure. You may love the idea, but you may not feel it. And you may not feel it because your emotions are littered with crap from the past life, or you may not feel it because your feelings do not go alongside love like that. They don't work in this particular whatever it is, so you don't believe something, right? Now here's another thing. Let's look at the architecture of incarnation a different way. Maybe you feel it, maybe you love it, but you feel so unstable it doesn't feel solid. You don't fully believe it. Why? Well, you feel it and you love it, but you fail to protect it. So it is not grounded and your heart does not believe. You do not have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost or zero. Step one and step two incorporated into belief. Now here's where it gets, oh, even more interesting, my friend, okay? how law of attraction works. So at the top is our last little triangle of belief. At the bottom is someone we law of attracted. So law of attraction works by these triangle principles and uh, sacred geometry, geometry teaches us this and how conscious comes together. But look at this. In this particular case, belief structure A, the person at the top, how they protect, the person at the bottom loves the way they protect that person's belief. So it, you can basically connect to other human beings up to three sides of the triangle. This is why three is a magical number. Once you get into the state of three, there's up to three ways that you can connect to another human being that you can law of attract. You can law of attract your love to your protect, your love to your love, your love to their feel, right? Their feel to your protect. But I do believe it sticks together like this because when they come together, they form a square. A square is a block. A square is a unit of strength. A square, turn on the right side, is something you can build upon. So this is the fundament of society and human culture, my friends. It comes down to the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is I protect, I love, and I feel. That forms a belief. Your belief then laws of attracts a triangle that forms a square. Now this is also how conflict works, okay? You could say that the top triangle is ISIS and the bottom triangle is capitalistic America because really it's about capitalism. I don't know, the religions are a little different, really. They say it's about God, it's really about capitalism, fighting over pipelines and stuff like that, really, if you want to know the truth, my friends. But the point is, is that in this case, a square can be a negative thing or a strong thing both as everything can be good or evil on earth. And so the square represents, you know, you could have uh, two sides of a triangle coming together based on protection. P capitalism is protecting on the bottom, ISIS is protecting on the top, and boom, they square off. No one's moving anywhere in that square in those two negativities. Now, a good square is the same thing. Let's say you have two people who both believe in protecting. Let's say the top is a is an ISIS person. I don't want to keep using ISIS as an example. I don't want to give them any more energy, actually. I think it's all stupid. But uh, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of a different example of law of attraction based on other things than religion. 
Um, do, do, do. Oh, how about let's say that you're in an alternative society, such as being gay, or you're handicapped, or you're in a low minority group. So in that case, uh, at the top is your minority group, and you want to protect yourself. And at the bottom, someone else who wants to be protected comes together in that minority group. And the two of you form a solid square. And the strength is you can't budge. We're strong. We're going to build something on this foundation. So as you can see, three is a very magical number. Very magical. Because with three comes the fundament of manifestation. In order to manifest, you must consciously plant an intention in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. They all must go together into a, co a concert of triangular belief. All right? And tomorrow, we're going to talk about belonging, and we're going to incrementally build this like through. So if you haven't watched the last show yesterday where you came back on the air, you might want to watch it because these shows now I've decided to go ahead and build how things work. And in Sagittarius, I think it's uberly important to understand how belief structure works, how human consciousness works, and therefore how your belief works. So while you're watching the break, ask yourself, what do your beliefs lack? Do they lack your feelings? Do they lack your love? Do they lack your own protection? Think about that, and I'll be right back after this. Having trouble finding that special soulmate? Oh, I know. Are you ready to find love? So what do you think your ideal mate is? This I can solve for you. Check out Secrets of Birthdays, The Love and Lust Report at secretsofbirthdays.com. And here we are back at the Somar Trading Post. Couple of things. For one, the Secrets of Birthdays Love and Lust Report is just $19.95. And in 22 minutes, you'll learn all about your love life and what you law of attract and what your greatest lesson is. If you'd like to know a little bit more about how I put them together and edit them myself, come on down to secretsofbirthdays.com. Be sure to join our email list. You can do that at soulmart.me or you can do that on our Facebook. Instantly, go to namastetoday.me and you'll be taken to our new Namaste Today Facebook. And I do post throughout the day a little extra uh, features and tidbits. I'll be starting to post um, videos and on namastetoday.me. You can also join our email list just by clicking with your Facebook icon. You'll want to know because I'm going to be releasing the December Megascopes any moment now. I'm still struggling through some graphic issues, but as soon as I figure it out, they will be out. And you will get an email over this holiday weekend. You're going to want to know what it's all about. Now, I also have a super special, which I've extended now till June 15th. If you buy a one-hour reading with me, you can get a free 30-minute follow-up that you can use up until June 15th of 2015. And you can now get a gift certificate for a one-hour reading for just $99. So if you buy a $99 gift certificate, it'll auto-upgrade to $140 that you can cash all through next year. So be sure to check out soulmart.me. Thank you in advance. It does keep me on the air and eating. So let's look into today's gong. Today's gong is a phrase that you have certainly heard before, but perhaps today it has a new meaning. Three is a charm, right? And now we know why three is charm. We talked about it just recently. But today I employ you to go out there looking for the threes. This is going to help you understand. And when you see the threes... Right? Something happens in three. They say death happens in three. They say, you know, things happen in three. And the truth is, is that we're looking to fulfill the three. So even if we only see two of the three, our soul wants that third filled. But if you analyze anything that's important to your heart today, see if you can see all three things come together. Not only will it manifest in the sense of the Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or I protect, I love, I feel. But it will also manifest in a set of threes as well. You'll find that there, anything we manifest on earth tends to have three pieces of it that come together. So look for where three charms your heart today. And I think three is a charm comes from the idea that when the three line up, your heart is charmed. And it feels quite charming, I would say. But I'm not sure. If anyone wants to tell me where this phrase actually comes from, I'd be very curious. Gemini or Sag out there probably knows. But before you go off counting in threes, let's take a look at the moods of each of your brothers and sisters today. And I'm going to talk about the sun, Mercury conjuncting Saturn. Remember, it is time we've made up our mind, right? We have decided we have to hold and tow a line. So for each of the 12 zodiac races, where are you holding the line? Scorpio, sunny and chatty today, but you need to hold ground on your ego protection. And when I say hold ground, I mean until Christmas Eve. 
The Leo, sunny and producing today. You need to hold ground on your emotional foundation. Hold your ground at home and with your family. No more going back. Time to hold your ground. Step two, the Cancer, sunny and sentimental today. You need to hold ground, though, on protecting your heart. Do not retreat or go backwards whatsoever. The Sag is sunny and productive today also. Hold ground, though, on your spiritual faith. All right? Let's get rid of those insects. Step four. Uh, oops. Whoops. We skipped someone. Step four, the Aquarius is cloudy and private. Maybe a little grouchy today. But you need to hold ground on your career objectives. You do not need to change. Stay straight like an arrow until Christmas Eve. Step five, the Gemini. Sunny, feeling maybe a little sexual today, but you want to hold ground on your health decisions and your lifestyle changes now. Step six, the Libra. Sunny, nesting and resting, but you want to hold ground on your pricing. Do not negotiate. Do not lower your prices at this time. Step seven, the Pisces. Sunny and social today, but you want to hold ground on your beliefs and on your life purpose. All right, so everything you believe, do not waver. Step eight, the Capricorns. Sunny and cool with the moon in their sign, but you want to hold on to your social commitment. So if you said you'd be there, you best be there. Step nine, the Aries. Sunny and professional today, but really, because you're an Aries, a purebred of human, you want to hold ground on all boundaries altogether. So normally I say Aries is need to be flexible. Now I'm saying you need to be inflexible. Step 11, uh, step 10 is the Taurus is sunny and pensive today. You need to hold ground in all relationships, Tauruses. If you figured it out, hold your ground, stick there. And the most important to hold ground on is the one with yourself, the Meerage. Step 11, the Virgos, sunny and childlike with the moon in Capricorn. Probably a little impatient as the moon crosses and heads for uh, Mars. But you want to hold ground with your mental attitudes. No more mind games, no more backstepping, no more changing things. Stay focused in that regard. So looking at the light worker parade, actually, uh, because we're running a little behind, I'm going to step ahead and uh, jump to the fun part. If you're on YouTube, please be kind and do subscribe to our channel. It helps us with our YouTube relationship. On Facebook, you can like us now at namastetoday.me. And of course, don't forget to join our email list so you can find out about all the cool stuff coming out for Christmas. But the kindest thing you can do is share. Retweet us. Post us on Facebook. That's the best, kindest gratitude you can give. And we do appreciate it. I thank you ahead of time. And that brings us to uh, today's song of the day. And if you don't know, I am adding, uh, using songs or picking songs that came right at the same time that Saturn entered Sagittarius last time. Because you know how a song can bring you into a kind of a funky mood and remind you of that time. That's the whole point. I encourage you to listen to this music so that you can go back in space and time and start to understand where you last formatted your beliefs. And here's a song, One Night in Bangkok. Remember this song? Oh my God. This song actually came out in 84, but it was, it was still top of the charts in 85, which is what I remember as a kid. Like it never went off the radio. And it was such a weird song, really. But what's interesting about it is it's so Saturn and Sagittarius, so exotic, Bangkok, you know, and it's kind of a rap in a weird white way, you know. Um, I, I, you know, it's like what, I, my favorite line in this song actually is, uh, I'd let you watch. I would invite you, but the queens we use would not excite you. <laughs> that song, that, that has always stayed in my head. So, ah, I am off. I'm so grateful that this has continued to record till end. Thank you so much for watching, folks. I love you. I will see you in 24 hours with more. Until then, have one night in Bangkok and live, love, be. <laughs> this is just so ironic.